All right, first thing I'm going to say is this is the third video I'm doing basically saying the same stuff over again. First time I thought I sounded like an idiot. I sound like an idiot lots of times, but I still post anyways. Uh, for that one, I just didn't. Uh, secondly, the second one I was just about to do, the battery started freaking out on me and I went, you know what, let's just do it again. It's going to be rambly. It's I'm going to try to get the... Well, I'm just going to go with what I go, and I'm going to move the camera, this is going to be low budget, whatever. Okay, so I got a couple of things in the post yesterday, I was surprised to get both of them because the notifications were saying, oh, they're a long way away, I was like, holy cow. One, I was mind-bogglingly surprised it came so quick, the other one was taking forever. This one was showed up super quick. So this is, um, I think I've mentioned it before, I'm a member of... Whore Berlin or Whore Live or whatever, it's an online radio station. They're just amazing. The amount of different music styles they have and what did somebody call it? Oh yeah, uh, coming to you live from the techno toilet. It's just, you know, you just got to go watch their YouTube stuff. It's just, well, if you're into that. Well, like I said, there's tons of different streams or, or uh, uh, styles. But they also now have their very own website, and, uh, and that's when I joined, uh, became a member, and and so on and so forth. And in the back, uh, it's too bad I can't wear this at work, obviously, because uh, people, you know. But it's extremely well uh, made, almost a bit too well made. It's extremely thick. I've never, I don't know what the hell. It's very thick. There's no way I'm wearing this in in hot weather, on a sunny day, especially with the black. That would be like insane. The second thing that came in, which I was really surprised it was taking so flipping long, but it is amazing looking. We're gonna bring it down so I can make sure you can see it properly. Like I said, it's gonna be rambly and gonna be all over the place. Oh, that's the way it goes. Is the trench knife uh, game popped in? And I'm hoping to goodness that, um, I know Meandering Mike ordered it, and I hope he does a proper untinning, like goes through the rules and so on and so forth. I'm just gonna say this, I don't know if it's because it's a small format or if it's but unorthodox format or a combination or whatever. But I almost feel like I give these things like a gimme, like you can just be cheap quality or whatever and I'm still like, oh, you tried, whatever. This is good quality. Uh, the person has some kind of texture to the print. It is amazing looking. Wait until you see the back. Holy jeepers jumping. Look at this thing. It's got some amazing, oh, I was just like, wow. Like, I'm in for it. Like, it's really well done. Then, like I said, the second thing that knocked my socks off was it came with dice. I know everybody and their dog comes with dice. Well, not like I said, maybe for these type of games. I was, like, really impressed. Um, this is just from me doing my own stuff. I was like, okay, you can get micro cubes. Um, hello. And, well, I knew you can get other shapes, uh, but I'm like, microcubes? This is going to solve so many issues when I'm using the Alberto markers and so on and so forth. Woof. Um, yet again, something I thought perhaps the person could uh, skimp on. Doesn't seem to. It's like a satin finish, I think. It's nice. It's good quality. It's going to stand up. This is well done. Well thought out for components. I have no idea if the game is what well it... It's going to remind you, show, me, uh, show you the game I'm thinking about. It looks good. Like I said, it doesn't have that uber shininess, it seems. Like it's a satin finish. I'm okay with that. I understand why people go gloss. It's got a bit more rigidity, um, you know, uh, than let's say matte or whatever. But um, for eye fatigue and... and uh, is it, I'm going to leave that there. Actually, I'll just push it all over. Uh, no, you don't need to see this. It doesn't really matter. It reminded me of this game quite a bit. Um, the print and play game, uh, The 14 Days, which I was originally going to morph or reskin into a trench game. And I was like, well, everybody and their dog always does a trench thing. And I went, you know what? Use the mechanisms in here. Reskin it still. And I st always wanted to do a choose your own adventure type of. Uh, um, operational thing. I'm like, why not figure out if there's some way you can kind of like morph the 11 battles of the Asanzo. Maybe not 14 days, but it's going to be the 11 battles. 
and you pick you want to be the um, the Italians or do you want to be the Austro-Hungarians and I'm gonna see if I can do this I think I can um, it's not it's it's a really interesting I just have to just spend some time these are 11 by 17s um, uh, I'm just going to go and take a look and uh, see if I can use it for doppel uh, my doppeldecker game and see what I can I want to get this properly done like my, my version it's going to be like a an old um, 70s wood grain TV kind of <laughs> it's going to be ridiculous uh, the game you can kind of see down here. I'm not um, still haven't looked at the rules yet. I still would love to play the Suez 1916 um, a game from Decision Games. It's just not um, compelling enough at at this moment in time. But I want I want to get into it. Okay, which I've told you one trillion flipping times. I'm so into is the Soldiers game. It's got so much potential, especially when I'm looking at. Uh, African uh, thingamajigs. I'm like, okie doke. You're all over the place uh, for that. Oh, it, it's just a good system. I think it's, um, yeah, it's extremely tweakable. Um, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm all right. What I, you can see many games, I think, uh, often are like, well, you can only be used. Like, that's why we picked 1914 or 1918 because we we don't know how to deal with uh, that attritional trench thing. This is you don't it, you're fine you're fine with this because pick the battles you're gonna do you're not gonna do the whatevers but there's a zillion things that were going on with the Battle of Verdun and so on and so forth and the Psalm and whatever you don't think you can pop that on in in here for little tiddly bits or what the hell's going on right now uh in romania just um i'm just saying you're look look at the scale uh i'm happy okay and speaking of romania let's truck on over to my pseudo dervelt creek map over here i'm not really sure if the colors are right it's an old map um i'll try to scan or pop out i think i'm maybe yeah i'm fully on i'm sorry like I said, it's going to be uh, whatever, um, low budget from hell. Um, maybe I'll bring it up a little bit. Hold on. Just a little bit. All right. Hold on here. All right. And there's some counters way the hell over there. You can't even, I can barely see. It's like I better make sure I've got my reading glasses. I haven't put the Romanians uh, down. I'll go take a look. I'll show you the counters. Um, these are soup. Do these are my original, not the uh, the Austro-Hungarian ones, but the uh, the Bulgarian ones are ex my very very first uh, incarnation of. I was like, hold on, I'm going to eventually get into um, you know doing the whole uh, Great War, and that was you know, I, those are like two year old counters, but I'm like, well, you still got them out, of, like take them out of the closet. I still have to um, pop in. Well, obviously the Romanian troops. I popped in the fortresses. Didn't really matter for now. Varna's yeah, just same for now. Um, holy moly, though, it's just like youch. There's lots of weird. St there's already some Austro-Hungarian um, and Russian interaction going on here. It's like whoa. There's also another thing. I you know you can see it. He's supposedly in the setup. He's on a pseudo hex or something like that. I've got five river flotilla. Uh, thingamabobs to use for Austro-Hungary, Austro, Austria-Hungary, so I'll see what I can do there. Um, yeah, let's, like I said, I may get a bit, no, we're good. Let, I'll go show the counters, we'll go off to, um, I'll try to go slow. And we'll maybe talk, you know, we certainly will talk a little bit about my CRT. I know at first it's going to look crazy. Uh, it may think, whoa, that's not, yeah, you can see I'm like in a total morph mode with this room. I'm trying it, well, it's getting back to winter time. So I'm, um, it's no longer going to be my secondary game room. It's going to be going back to what it was, a little den. So well, that TV was never there. It's like absurd. But um, I'll try to try to turn this into a place where I can watch uh, great war movies, have people over, play some video games, that type of stuff. So I'll try to go nice and slow. 
Yeah, um, yeah, I didn't have enough Romanian counters. I'm can't, which I think is probably going to be another uh, winter time thing for me, is getting back into um, painting some airplanes. And I went, oh, mind you, I just got a. Um, I, I know how to do eBay. Trust me, man. I know how to do eBay. So, anyways, I just got a seller who just sent me a little message. Hey, I just took off ten percent. Um, you know, for um, the pigeon carrier, uh, one to seventy-two model from Rod Roden. I was like, hmm, I think I may like that. So, oops, sorry. My original. I just didn't like the color because they're too close to the Russians. Oh shit, that's warping in the sun. Holy F, just from the glue. I mean, uh, yeah, it's still dry, but holy shit. That's a massive warp. I have to reflatten. Anyways, those are my Romanians. Yep, I'm going to go back to, um, I really want to get back to painting some models. Um, like I've said before, I, I would love to um, just paint spads for the rest of my life. <laughs> Uh, they're just so nice. They're so easy. I know. I find sometimes um, uh, painting models can be mind-boggling and frustrating. Maybe not as bad as um, the temple dogs. But <laughs> they can be. Oh, don't even get me into RPGing. Don't go away, Chris. Look away. Sorry, it's just like, oh, there's a spad. Hello, hello, I love you. All right, let's go down to my, um, the table with the Russians and so on and so forth. Um, and I just listened to a wicked uh, live stream. It was, I was envious, I'll be honest with you. It was kind of like, hey, that's like our live stream, but with money and <laughs> professionals. I was like, oh. Oh, anyways, this is the way it goes, eh? All right, let's get go down to here. I'm gonna be who I am. All right, let's go here. I know it's gonna, like I said, it's gonna be whatever. Um, or do I? Oh yeah, I've done that before, haven't I? So I don't know if you're gonna be able to see all the. Uh, you're probably not. Uh, I'll, maybe I'll move it around, to, or maybe it doesn't matter. So I'm at the Russian turn right now. Uh, or may actually, maybe. Mm -hmm. I wanted you to. It just makes more sense. We'll go from the other angle. So you can, it's just because I can put the camera f at a different spot. I think you're going to get much better, except for that god awful. Well, maybe I'll shut off the. Um, maybe it'll help a little. All right. I'm going to put you here. Something like that. Let's see where that happens. All right, hold on here. I'm gonna go and get the um, shut off the curtains or drapes or whatever you want to call them. All right. Yeah, my CRT. We'll talk about it in a bit. It's at first you at, or I as well was thinking, okay, it's broken. Mm, it's not broken. As far as I'm concerned, if I look at the philosophy behind it, or what is it trying to do, as far as I'm concerned, it's trying to show me that if I can, at this moment in time, put enough strength in a spot, I have the potential to make a breakthrough. The problem is, I mean, I mean, the Great War, which means I have limited amount of supply and, and so on, and limited amount of uh, communication. And let's see how bad that is. Oh, I think it's still okay. Low lighting, maybe. Um, so I, I can't follow through, odds are. Or I gotta start thinking about being able to follow through. Or I can't extend my railhead. All those things are still in play. All I'm doing is eliminating this absurd, um, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say things like absurd because it's, you know, dissing. Um, it's making the game fun, man. A lot more fun. Um, when I make a decision or decide to make an overwhelming attack in a spot, it's got a good chance of 
happening as far as I'm concerned. Yes, it's deadly. But it's only deadly if you, I can put enough supply and like strength points in that spot. Like I said, it can happen. But for how long? Look at Verdun. Look at uh, so many of the offensives. They started off so well and they, they peter out. And as far as I'm concerned, the way the rule system is as written, it does not uh, model that the way I would like to see it modeled. Uh, and there we go. Um, I'm going with it for a while. I'm going to use that CRT. I, I'm, I think it can be a lot more resilient and a lot less, um, a lot harder to be broken compared to uh, the one that is. Uh, I'll give you, no, I'm just, okay. Nope, I'm, I'm not going to, I'll stick with that. Well, let's just say there's three versions of the CRT. I know there's two versions, one because the second one was to try to show uh, the evolution of how deadly things started to become. Yeah, but then, uh, I excuse me, I thought people f started figuring out, oh yeah, you were flipping that in with the other rules about, uh, oh god, stop Chris, I don't want to uh, tear that apart. Let's talk about the CRT, and maybe you can tear mine apart. Because when I show you some of the results, you may go, what the hell are you doing? And like I said, it's the philosophy as far as I'm concerned. Yep, I'm going for an attack with Wooj especially with my CRT and understanding what's going to happen. These arrows, I don't know if you can see them all, um, I think I've mentioned with the Russians, I'm trying to, because of just the, uh, the sheer extent of their front, I'm trying to decentralize their command structure. So I've uh, decided to uh, make three sectors for this front. Uh, still, the center guy is going to be at uh, uh, Bialyalstok, um, that's going to be um, uh, Danilov, um, the Black Danilov, Yuri Danilov. Um, I haven't figured out who's going to be the uh, the northern and s uh, southern sector uh, commanders yet. I, I don't think so. But I've got, um, and then these yellow things are the objectives for now. I've got the 7th Army, 1st Army, 6th um, Army, 2nd uh, Army. That's going to be in, uh, integral because I'm going to try to get Wuj from the north. Here, I'm going to try to split. What I'm trying to do essentially with the Russians, a uh, three-way. Uh, we're going to try to take Memel. We're going to try to protect our flanks. Take Memel. Uh, we're take Cernovitz. And, um, and uh, you know, um, like I said, everybody's got some objectives here. So we've got, like, the, the second army objective. It's a monstrously, I understand, I uh, can't also extend my railhead because it's wintertime in Russia. Uh, no worries, no worries, no worries. Um, I've already projected how far out I can go. I can certainly go beyond Wuj. I don't think I'd ever make it there. <laughs> It'd be nice before May, but I don't think it'll... Mm, we'll see. But I, extremely unlikely. I know... Well, I don't know, but I mean on the ground level, like the other person, me, uh, knows that the Germans are going to melt like, uh, like I said before, uh, butter in the summer sun. Uh, and just concentrate and nucleate near uh, Wuj. Um, so there's the 4th Army, I've got the 9th Army here, I've got the 5th Army, 3rd Army, and I don't know if you can see the other people, probably not, 8th uh, Army over here, and the, um, uh, sorry, 6th Army and 10th Army is over there. 6th Army, I'm, uh, I actually don't even have the HQ, it's still in tra uh, transit going, uh, um, from the Caucasus, that doesn't happen until the end of January. So uh, I've only got a core uh, sitting over there, I'm still, and I'm also four core short. So I have to uh, build them. Uh, it's a nightmare. However, I'm just going to tell you how monstrous the Russian army is. It's insane. <laughs> because I have I've no longer have any other fronts. I've just got this. Because the Caucasus front is out the window. I just put a tiny little whatever. It's almost like a tit for tat with the, uh, the Turks. I've got 280 supply points. 16 replacement units I can pop somewhere else. I've got 10 army HQ, well 9. Uh, like I said, the 10th is coming at the end of the month. 16 core HQs. 11 artillery brigades. Uh, they've only got a 2 strength point, but they're integral, uh, integral for... Um, uh, remember, if there's five strength points or more in the trench, I've got to use. They have a solid defense. I have to have at least two 
uh, to not suffer an extra penalty. So that's wicked. I have 20 elite infantry divisions. That's uh, five strength points. I know it's not like Germans, but what, you know, I gotta go where they gotta go because I make up for it in numbers. Listen to this. 55 regular infantry divisions at four strength. And then I've got an additional 29 reserve infantry divisions. I've also got three infantry brigades at two strength points. And then I've got 20 uh, Opalcini, the People's brigade, uh, Brigades. that can't be used for an attack, but they've got a, a defense value of one. So I can still you know, like roadblocks or put them somewhere. I've also got 12 cavalry divisions um, at uh, one strength point. I've also have four elite cavalry divisions at two strength points. I've got six engineering regiments and, like I said, 11 infantry brigades. Good things are going to happen if I play my cards right. Yeah, I did some... Ca uh, like I said, I'm converting um, Dervelt Creek turn, turns into actual dates. Uh, it just makes more sense for my narrative. Now let's go and talk a little tiny bit about my CRT and that'll be about it because I don't want to drive people nuts. So when I did the 50 thing, the 50 strength points versus 7 strength points in a trench with broken terrain, not good in Dervelt Creek terms, uh, they were only able to force a retreat once. I think it was like average was like what three point. Uh, wasn't very many hits. I don't think I have. Oh, I do. Excellent. So it was. Um, they averaged four point three hits um, per combat. I did nine combats. Their low was a three and a high was a seven. Uh, or is that the die roll? I think yes. It was. Um, yeah, four point three. All right. So, and then I also did the counterattack as well. Whereas mine, every single combat with the 50 strength points on the 7th uh, forced a retreat. And uh, my counterattacks were pretty darn similar just due to the fact that it was very low uh, strength points and um, they were, you know, uh, on my side, they were forced to retreat. I should have done it if they weren't forced to retreat. I can still do it. That's really about it. Um, I'm super duper happy. Things are going well. Um, but, you know, not as quickly. But, I mean, what do you want? I've got so much going on with this game and, and uh, everything else. But, uh, yeah, that's about it. Okay. I'll stop talking. Oh, you know what? Just hold on. I'll let, I'll let Leo. You can take a hang out with Leo. Hey, puss. Hold on, you. Hello, you. Hello, puss. Oh, you poos. Hello, you. Hello. Oh, you are a good old puss. You are a good old puss. Hmm? You good puss. Alright. Okay, having fun. See ya.